Oh, hi there. Um, so if it happens to be the one day out of the 365 of the year that you're watching it on February 20th, if that happens to be the day, and then happy National Cherry Pie Day. If not, well, now you know. When it comes to February 20th, that would be National Cherry Pie Day. All right. So this is lesson... This is a lesson on the law of signs. So we're going to apply the law of signs to solve problems in geometry, and which is our goal for today. And the law of signs, which really has to do with um, using the trig function sine, but it also is just a proportion. So we're kind of combining two, two um, math concepts into one to prove things about triangles. So um, we're going to start off with this. Uh, it, this essential understanding. It says if you know the measures of two angles and the length of a side, so either an angle, angle, and then a side, or an angle, and then a side, and an angle, or two side lengths and the measure of an, a non include angle, which would be like SSA, we're not going to turn that around because that's naughty, um, then you can find all the other measures of the triangle. And we're going to do that using this thing called the law of sines. So the law of sines says this, if or for any triangle ABC, it doesn't matter what type of triangle, any triangle, that's the nice thing about the law of sines is it works for any triangle, right triangle, non-right triangle, um, isosceles triangle, equal, whatever it is. For any triangle ABC, let the lengths of the sides opposite angles A, B, and C be lowercase a, b, and c. Then the law of sines relates the sine of each angle to the length of the opposite side. And remember, you only put angle lengths in for sine, angle measures. You don't put um, side lengths, you just put angle measures in for sine, so that's how we know. So here's our example. And you can take any part of this. You don't have to do the whole thing, any part of it to help you find a missing piece. But this is true for any triangle. The sine of angle A goes to the opposite side A, and that would be equal to the sine of angle B over um, side B or sine of angle C over side C. So you can pick any part of this. You could just say, all right, I'm going to use this part because I only want to use look at two sides and two angles, um, two sides and their opposite angles, and find one of the missing pieces. And then you solve the proportion. Um, you could say, all right, well, I, want to, I need to use side B and C and then the, their opposite angles as well. Or you could use the A and C. So that's what we're going to talk about today, how you use that. And it's actually awesome. But here's why it works. It actually has to do with the altitudes, and we talked about a section on the altitudes the last chapter. But anyway, here's why it works. Draw the altitude from angle C to side AB, so the opposite side, and label it H. So we have, have our altitude label H right here. And then we have triangle ACD and angle BCD are right, right, tri uh, right triangles now. Okay, so the sine of A, if we're looking at A, would be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So, so that would be over H over B, so that's side B. And sine of B, which we have right here, would be opposite, which is H over A. And that's the def from the de definition of sine. <clears throat> so there we go. So then if we solve both sides for H, for both equations for H, um, by multiplying by B on this side, over here, we get B times the sine of A is equal to H. And over here, if we multiply both sides by A, we get A times the sine of B equals H. So now by substitution, <clears throat> since they're both equal to h, then they're both equal to each other. So we know that the b times the sine of a is equal to a t um, times the sine of angle b. All right? And keep it in mind, um, these, we can take, a, uh, we can, uh, we can use the division property of, of equality and divide both sides by b to cancel this out. 
So I have sine of A equals A times the sine of B over B. And then we're also divide by A here. Cancel that out, and, and we have to do that to the other side. So we're left with sine of angle A is over side A equals sine of angle B over side B. And we can do the same thing with the C's. <coughs> We're just using we're just using what we know about what sine is, and then also using some some substitution here to to prove the law of sines. And that's not necessarily something that you need to know, but I think it's great to see how things work sometimes, because um, sometimes we just trust that the that these laws or these theorems are true, but we don't actually know why. In this case, now we can we just showed why we just proved the law of sines, which I think is pretty cool. So now that we know why it works, let's let's go ahead and use it. All right, here's an example. In triangle PQR, so I'm going to draw that out and label it. That that tends to help me. Uh, not that you always have to, but I would say that it's very helpful to draw and label a triangle so you know what parts you're working with. Angle P is 40 degrees. Should have a degrees there. Measure of angle P. Measure of angle Q is 80 degrees. And PR is 15, so PR is 15. So obviously we have uh, angle, angle, size. So that's one of the things we can do, use this law of sines for to find the other missing pieces. We need to figure out what, now obviously we can figure out what um, um, angle R is because all of them have to add up to 180. But we're just trying to find QR right now. So this would be our missing piece, okay? And remember, we cannot use just regular sine, cosine, or tangent, because this isn't necessarily a right triangle. So we don't know that, so we have to use the law of sines. Okay, as long as we can use it, the law of sines works great. So we're going to say, uh, let's see, we're trying to find QR. So we're going to say um, sine of 40 over that x. We have to be equal to, hopefully we have another opposite angle inside. We do. We'll say sine of 80 goes with 15. So this works because, whoops, because there's only the one missing part. And that one missing part um, is what we're going to solve for. So let's do our, solve our proportion. We actually move some of this over. Whoa. Whoa. Oops. I guess we have a little bit more room to solve this. All right, so then when we do that, we're left with x times the sine of 80 equals 1 times the sine of 40. Okay, divide both sides by sine of 80. Oops, sine of 80. And we'll get what x is. So we just need to pull out our calculator here and <clears throat> figure out what the sine of 40. So we'll do sine 40. Oops. And divide that by sine of 80. Let's see. Oh, I just realized why that doesn't make sense. We missed the 15. I put 1 instead of 15 here. So I, I just have to multiply that by 15. All right, and we get 9.79 or about 9.8. Okay? And that means that side length of X is 9.8 units. So the nearest tenth. There we go. All right? All right, so number 2 here. Why don't you try this one on your own? Label the triangle and use the law of sines. So as you pause it, and I'll work it through and you can check in a second. Use the law of sines to try to find the measure of angle Z. So you might have to use the inverse sine at some point in this, okay? All right, why don't you pause it and try that one. All right, so I drew my triangle. Um, I set up the law of sines. Remember, you have to set up, if you have sine of an angle, it has to be over the opposite side. So I have sine of Z over... 10 is equal to sine of 100 over 
24. And instead of doing the um, cross multiplication, I just multiply both sides by 10 to cancel out this 10 right here. And then I have sine of z is equal to 10 times sine of 100 over 24. And then you do the inverse sine. Remember to get that, rid of that sine that's in front of the z, you do the inverse sine of both sides. And to the nearest tenth, I actually got 24.2 when I did that in the calculator. Okay, that means that angle is 24.2 degrees, which is much smaller than the 100 degree angle because it makes sense. It's opposite a side that is much smaller. All right? All right, now we have the triangles here for you. It says use the law of sines to solve each triangle. Okay, I'm going to go through both of them. You can pause it and try one of them if you'd like um, and see how you do. I'm going to go through both of them here briefly and um, it's going to go quick though. So we're going to use the law of sines for each one. Um, and just to each triangle, we're trying to find the missing pieces. This one we're trying to find x and y. This one we're trying to find x degrees. Um, that's all that we're trying to find here. So for the first one, you can find the missing angle pretty easily. Um, if you'd like to. 60 plus 75 is actually 135, so that means that the last one would be 45 degrees. All right, but to find x, let's do sine of 75 over x equals, um, you can do either one. Let's do the sine of 60. Actually, we have to do this one because we only have that one side length over 12. And then you solve it using a proportion, and you get x equal to, I've already done it, so I've got x is equal to 13.4. Okay, when I solved that proportion. Now you do have to do it again, because we have to find the opposite, we have to find uh, y, so we know that we have sine of 45 then, because we know the opposite angle, is to y, and that's equal to, again, sine of 60, over 12 will work. All right. When you solve that one using the using a cross multiplication, I got 9.8. All right. So we got our xy and our missing angle. So for number four, I'm just going to find the missing angles because if I find that one uh, and also this missing side here. So let's start with the missing angle. I got sine of 110. And the opposite one is 18. So I have one with its opposite, so that's good. We have one part of a proportion. Um, and I also have this 10 right here. So let's do sine of x is going to be equal or over 10. Now I do my cross multiplying, or I just multiply by 10 both sides by both sides right now. And then I have to take the inverse sign, remember, inverse sign. And I end up getting x is equal to. 31.5, that would be in degrees, so now we have that uh, measurement. So then we have the third angle, which is going to be, so if that's 31.5 degrees, that third angle would be, it's going to be pretty small, 110 plus 30, um, 1.5, and you take that away from 180, so you get 38.5 degrees. So if we set up a another proportion, we can do um, we can do again sine of 110. Oops, 110 over 18 is equal to this time sine of 38.5 over y. And then again, solving a proportion, I would just cross multiply and I end up getting for this one um, y is equal to 11.9. That's a side length, so I don't even need to put degrees there. 11.9 or 11.9 units. Okay, and that fits with, with what our triangle kind of looks like there. So that's using this law of signs just to find missing parts of a triangle. We did four examples there. Um, so I'd like you to take a look at this this one last example. This is kind of our last question that I'd like to look at. It says two Coast Guard ships, the Alpha and the Beta, are 3,000 feet apart. So we have this labeled as 3,000. The angles from the line form a line between the Coast Guard ships to a disabled ship um, are shown. So this is our disabled ship right here. And the angles are shown 45 and 35. If you want to fill in the last one, you'd have a 100 angle degree, 100 degree angle here because that would make 180. How far is the disabled ship from each Coast Guard ship? So why don't you try solving these? I'm only going to give you the answers for these. We want to find the 
the two missing parts, X and Y here, round to the nearest foot. All right, if you want to pause it, and then I'm going to give you the answers in just a second. All right, so there you go. Um, I got the Y, the distance from beta to the missing ship is 1,747 feet. And then X from alpha to the missing ship is 2,154 feet. And I used the law of sines for that to set up the proportion and solve it. All right, so law of sines is a great thing. Uh, going back to the goal, um, applying that law of sines to solve problems in triangles is a great thing because you can find missing parts, angles, or um, sides of any type of triangle as long as you have at least known um, an angle measure and its opposite side length, okay? So that's the law of sines. Next time we're going to do the law of cosines, which is another one similar, a little bit more confusing, and it works for specific cases as well. All right, have a great rest of your day. That's the law of sines.